and uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, making cos cosplay props using uh, Wiimos, which is a microprocessor. Terence mentioned that as well earlier, and uh, new pixels. So this actually came about because of a D and D event in my uh, company. So my mission is to make a time traveler costume, and. Uh, you know, the requirement is it has to be visible in the dark because the place is actually uh, quite dark. Uh, it has to be small so that it can fit in my bag because I'm going to work and then immediately go to that event. And uh, it has to survive for hours because that's how long the event really is. <laughs> so, yeah. So, end product uh, is what this looks like. It's uh, something like, it looks like a wrist bracer. Um, and they have uh, new pixel lights that can uh, change colors. Okay. So, uh, what skill sets were required? Basically, this is um, done over <coughs> two weekends. So, I have about four days to do it. Uh, first, is uh, you need a little bit of electronics. Um, and I based it on the Arduino platform uh, using ESP8266 and VMOS board. Uh, Programming is via Arduino. Um, I did some PCB etching as well. Some soldering and crimping and uh, some fabric craft as well to kind of build the, you know. <laughs> okay, so going to, yes. Okay, on the electronics part, let's start with uh, Wemos D1 Mini. Uh, very convenient board to use. It's a ESP8266 breakout board. Uh, power is 3.3 volts with a five volt uh, voltage regulator. And the NeoPixel uh, requires actually 5 volt to work with uh, one data pin. Alright. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, how many people don't know why it's NeoPixel? Okay. Uh, quick introduction to NeoPixel. NeoPixel is <coughs> actually a LED bulb, right? But it's programmable, which means that uh, you can send data to it and ask it to change colors. So, it's like RGB colors. And the beauty of the new pixel is you can have like eight boxes, you can link them all together with just one data pin. You can control all eight of them with different colors. Okay? So that's the uh, beauty of the new pixel. I don't need eight different pins to all this. Okay, so, but the thing is that with a 3.3 volt uh, board and a new pixel that requires 5 volt. How I'm going to power this thing. So next thing is, I have LiPo battery, which is a uh, operating range 4.2 volt to 3.7 volts. On the on the label, it says 3.7 volts. Uh, okay, it's a bit too high for Wemos. It's a bit too low for new pixel. But the thing is that new pixel can run on 3.3 volts. Uh, all right. And uh, the Wemos, uh, well, if I pass it through a 5 volt pin, 4.2 volt can be set down. And the Wemos actually is quite robust. It can run below 3.7. Okay, so what I did was to pass this through the uh, Wemos 5 volt pin to step it down. But the LiPo battery, I directly run it into the Wemos power. Okay. So, to, for power also, uh, I need a small form factor because I need to be wearing this on my wrist, right? So, it is actually just a drone battery, it's the size. Right, so this is what it looks like when you put all them together. That's the LiPo battery, uh, super enlarged, <laughs> okay? <laughs> this is the Wemos board and that is the uh, NeoPixels. Okay, at the PCB box here. All right, um, all of them are of course uh, connected via these connectors here, so it's easier for me to plug out and uh, maintain it. Okay, next one is uh, right. How do I charge this Wemos? Uh, sorry, this LiPo battery is. Uh, I actually have a TP four zero five six power board, which I connect to a power bank to charge this battery because this this thing only lasts about one hour actually so it's like you know uh, every one hour I have to recharge this 
Okay, next is uh, the PCB board. So the PCB board um, is actually very thin. If you, it's actually quite flexible. I brought a sample. It's bendable. It's very very thin. All right. So, which is good because uh, for something that you wear, you don't want something that's hard and thick. All right. So what I did was uh, draw the the lines that I needed. So if you look at this, um, this is what my circuit looks like. The black part is the ground pin, the red part is the uh, power, and then the yellow lines is the data pin. So NeoPixel has four legs. One for power, one for ground, then one for data in, one for data out. So this is where it starts. Uh, ground and power is here, and then um, the, the first LED, sorry, the first LED is here. So the, the, the data that comes from the microprocessor goes through here and goes to the first leg, data in. Then from here it goes to the data out and that's connected to the data in of the next one. So it goes all the way around to here. And uh, you'll notice there's uh, two extra little uh, true holes here. It's like I notched it down there. Uh, that's very blurry. This is very important. This is where you put your capacitor. <laughs> because when you work with nail pixels, NeoPixels is very sensitive to uh, voltage drop. Okay, so if you if the voltage drop is too high, um, it cannot read the data properly. So you will, your lights tend to either flicker or it gives you a wrong color. So that's why you want to put a capacitor somewhere near your NeoPixel uh, build. Okay. Next is, uh, okay, PCB etching. Um, there are actually quite a few people that have uh, talked about PCB etching, so I won't go into the details. Uh, I, uh, I was quite fascinated with the color. <laughs> like, when I started, the, the etching solution is basically hydroperoxide, vinegar, and salt. All right, all household items. So it's like plain, clear color. But by the time I finish, it has this really nice turquoise color, so I was quite fascinated with it. But this is what I started with. You can see the copper area around it, and after I've etched that out, um, you can see the PCB uh, board behind, and you can see through it. Uh, this is where I etched. Uh, basically, I etched the copper away from the front and the back, so you can actually see through. Okay, next is NeoPixels. Now, NeoPixels, uh, the one that I use is actually this form factor. Uh, currently, not many people actually know about this. Um, most of what you see is actually in this kind of form factor, it's a NeoPixel strips. Or you can get the ring shaped. So what I used was this one because this is actually very conveniently uh, diffused. So it's easier for me to work than uh, trying to work with a strip. Um, yeah, so the four pins are all labeled here, right? Next is the, the code, right? So, okay, the code um, is basically kind of paste very aggressively. <laughs> so, okay, um, code sample is there, but basically, okay, what happens is I, I it's based on the Adafruit uh, Pixel library and the uh, Remos ES, ESP8266 library. And um, I took the sample code from the Adafruit, um, especially this with uh, you know the light chaser and all that. So I modified that code. Basically, I reduced the brightness because the code used is very, really bright. That you can't even look at it. In, you know, it will blind you. Uh, the other thing is that of course I added the Wi-Fi AP to control and change the pattern. So, uh, for example, this one is the default uh, chaser. Um, you can technically log in using uh, Wi-Fi. Uh, it's a, it's a Wi-Fi AP in here, so you can just log into here and then um, change the color. So you can, I can change it to like just red or green or, uh, you know, uh, colors chasing themselves, that kind of stuff. Okay. Next is, uh, right. Yeah, so that's why I can use my mobile phone and change. And it's actually quite useful in the sense that uh, after I finished my event, I actually showed it to my uh, nieces and nephews, and they took turns, you know, uh, wearing it and running around all the place. And 
as they were playing, I was changing the color according to whatever play they were having. <laughs> so, next thing is, uh, yes. Um, no sewing required, because I don't have time to sew. So a lot of things is just basically uh, crimpings um, and uh, hot gluing. It only really didn't last 4 hours. <laughs> okay, so um, you would notice that all this, there's very nice round holes here. It's not like I can cut really nice round holes. Okay, the holes that I cut are actually quite horrible. <laughs> So how do I make it look nice is I use something called grommets uh, which are already kind of mouth nice and round and all I have to do is just uh, put them together and crimp that and that will give me nice round holes that fits exactly 8mm into for my LEDs to put through okay then uh, of course this is a PVC leather which uh, you can buy from fabric shops and uh, right, so what happens is when I wear this thing, it's kind of floppy. Actually, I actually thought of uh, using things like ties, you know, straps, and all that. It's like kind of ugly, <laughs> and I don't want to sew. So finally, I settled on something which is very simple: a strip of leather and a magnetic clasp. And this magnetic clasp actually comes from handbags. So yes, bought from Daiso also. Uh, the other thing that uh, I want to point out is, for example, because um, again, I do not want to sew, so I don't want to strap over my uh, thumb. So what was simple to hold it in place is actually a finger ring, right? And in order to hold the finger ring in place, I use another very thin strip and something called a paper bread fastener. Cut a hole, punch this through, and that's it. It's actually very, very uh, stable and quite firm. Um, how do I create this shape? It's literally hand drawn. Put the hand there and draw it. <laughs> <laughs> then cut it. And uh, how do I know how to space out my uh, my LEDs? Is I just literally place all the grommets in place and then I stuck a cellophane tape over it. To hold them in place and then I draw them out so that I can get the shape. So that's what happens See, from the template to the thing. Uh, yeah, so um, if you look very closely, they're not actually very flat and round, but it's far away, it looks decent. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, this is what it looks like when it's finally assembled. Um, these are actually hot glue, so they don't last. Uh, they actually came off already. Um, but yes, so yeah, they are connected. So the only thing is this. I have uh, another double-sided tape to 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 actually uh, glue the board to the leather, and of course some double-sided tape to uh, hold this in place. These are actually kind of free for thing, but because I have the backing here, which is to protect my hand from lipo battery in case it explodes. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, uh, all the sharp stuff that, uh, on this board, which is uh, not very comfortable. Um, so, with that, it kind of holds the rest of this part in place, right? Uh, yeah, so that's the backing, and then this is the strip, and that's what it looks like. Uh, at the end of the build. Source code uh, is there. Slides also is in my GitHub if you are interested. Uh, yeah, so that's it. Any questions? Uh, yes. Is there a reason why I use a drone battery specifically instead of saying buttons and batteries or something like that? Buttons? Uh, you mean like two batteries? Uh, yeah, something like that. Okay, two battery is uh, three volts. Oh, right. <laughs> So I have to like use the three three batteries of those one point five like L thirty three, but those are like really big, and then I have to build a holder for it. So I would rather not go that, you know, too much things to do. <laughs> so yeah, but it was kind of lucky because I had this lying around. 
So yes, any other questions? So if anyone has any other questions, so please support us after the talk. So thank you.